How's it going guys? Kyle here with Awesome Sauce News. Today I'll be comparing the DirectCU Mini GTX 670 to ASUS's DirectCU 2 GTX 670. Uh, I figured I might as well do this comparison video because, well, I personally use a DirectCU 2 G GTX 670 at home, so I had access to that, and I also had access to the DirectCU Mini. I'm actually borrowing it from Newegg at the time. But today I'm just going to be comparing and contrasting the two separate cards because they're very similar but yet have some significant differences as well. Uh, the specifications are pretty much exactly the same, same number of CUDA cores, same memory interface, both 256-bit, uh, PCIe Gen 3, so forth. Uh, however, the DirectCU Mini does come factory overclocked right out of the box. So I will be manually overclocking the DirectCU to GTX 670 to make it fair. So hopefully we'll see some similar performance results. I didn't spend too much time trying to find the perfect overclock settings. I would consider both of these cards to have the exact same performance. For example, if I was testing out a DirectCU 2 top card, I would expect it to be about the same as the DirectCU Mini overclocked. Uh, so that said, what I, what I will be comparing today is the size of the cards, the temperature and power consumption of each, as well as the acoustics, and lastly, I will be testing out the performance. Even though, yes, they're, they're more or less expected to be exactly the same, I still was going to show you guys a few games that I ran these uh, cards with, uh, and just give you some frame rates because, hey, we all love benchmarks, right? So uh, with that said, why don't we get on to our first comparison test with size. So if you're looking at these two cards side by side, right off the bat, obviously the DirectCU Mini is significantly shorter than the DirectCU 2, by about 4 inches actually. So the DirectCU Mini measures 6.7 inches long, whereas the DirectCU 2 is 10.7 inches long. Uh, that said, you could easily still put the DirectCU Mini inside of a full tower or mid tower computer case. Might just look a little bit funny, but uh, you, you can still do SLI, so stack two or three of these bad boys up in a, in a you know, mid-tower computer case, and it might look pretty badass. Uh, but essentially, the DirectCU Mini is geared towards smaller form factor builds. Um, you know, more significantly, ITX builds. Many ITX systems would greatly benefit from a small card like this that's still going to be driving a lot of power for a lot of gaming potential and performance. Um, so, essentially, the size is just an added benefit, because a lot of mini ITX chassis out there um, can now accommodate full-length graphics cards, you know, cards up to 10 inches and beyond. Um, but still, I think there's still a benefit of having a smaller card, even if your chassis can accommodate a larger one. Just because the larger your card is, the more space it's taking up inside of your case, and that essentially limits the amount of airflow going through. Um, so even though it might be a minimal difference, I still see it as a benefit to have a smaller card like this one, especially in a mini ITX uh, form factor. Uh, essentially, if you look at the height of the cards, it doesn't really matter as much uh, when you're talking about GPUs, what the height of it is, uh, not nearly as much as the length anyway, but still I guess it's something to take into consideration. Um, the PCB of the DirectCU Mini is actually higher, it's actually taller than the DirectCU 2, I guess that's how they made it so short, is that they had to expand on that axis just a tad, so it's about half an inch taller than the DirectCU 2, but if you look here, the, the copper pipes coming out of the DirectCU 2 actually make it a taller card overall. So uh, it might look at first like the DirectCU Mini is taller, but, what, but in fact, uh, the uh, DirectCU 2 model is a little bit higher. Now to measure the acoustics of each of these cards, I used my Samson Go mic, and I actually took the side panel off of my chassis, um, but uh, I did test both idle and load configurations uh, and the audio levels for each of those for both cards. So why don't you take a listen and see for yourself which is the quieter card of the two. Alright, so clearly the winner in this round goes to the DirectCU 2. Uh, it was significantly quieter under full load uh, than the DirectCU Mini, which is pretty expected though, right? Because the DirectCU Mini only has one fan on it, so it's got to do the same job with half the manpower, because the DirectCU 2 clearly has two fans, don't have to spin up as much, don't have to work as hard as the DirectCU Mini, so I kind of feel bad for him. Uh, but he did a good job still nonetheless. Uh, with the side panel on, which I didn't show you guys, but I listened for myself, it was noticeable when the fans ramped up, or the fan ramped up on the DirectCU Mini, but it wasn't too much to the point where it took me out of the game or was obnoxious 
uh, or really even noticeable after a few seconds of hearing it. All right, so moving on to thermals, the DirectCU 2 basically beat out the DirectCU Mini in pretty much every test and game that I ran, which is completely expected, by the way, because with the DirectCU 2, you've got a much beefier cooler. You've got two fans cooling the whole thing. You've got a much wider, uh, expansive fin array going on, as, as opposed to the DirectCU Mini, which is this tiny little six, seven inch card that uh, is four inches shorter than, than the DirectCU 2. It's only got one fan on it. It's got a significantly smaller heat sink. Uh, as beefy as it is for the card size. Um, so it's pretty much no surprise here that the DirectCU 2 got much better thermals than the DirectCU Mini. Uh, but uh, just to recap here, I've got Bioshock Infinite, 74 degrees Celsius with the DirectCU 2, 81 degrees with the DirectCU Mini. Crisis 3, 65 degrees with the DirectCU 2, 81 degrees with the DirectCU Mini. Blood Dragon, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, awesome game. Got 68 degrees with the Direct CU2, and the Mini pumped out 82 degrees Celsius. And uh, lastly, 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme, 76 degrees with the Direct CU2, and 81 degrees with the Direct CU Mini. So uh, overall, uh, not terrible temperatures actually. The Direct CU Mini actually has some pretty decent thermals to it. They're not great, but they're not horrible either. There's nothing I would be alarmed of. Uh, they just kind of pale in, comp in comparison to the thermals that the DirectCU 2 was able to achieve. But like I said before, that is the sa one of the sacrifices that you make when having a significantly smaller form factor piece of hardware, like a GPU, like this DirectCU Mini. I mean, you're cutting off four inches of the cooler. So with that said, why don't we talk a little bit about power consumption? Not much to talk about, actually. Uh, pretty much the same all across the board. I was seeing wattage uh, power draw of about 160 to 170 watts. Uh, of course, this is going to vary with the DirectCU 2 that I have because, obviously, I, I manually overclocked it. So depending on how you would overclock that card, of course, that's going to change. It's going to fluctuate a bit. But essentially, these two cards draw about the same amount of power. Uh, and even, for example, the DirectCU Mini has a single 8-pin PCI E power connector, whereas the DirectCU 2 card has two 6-pin PCIe power connectors. So right off the bat, that kind of tips you off to believe that these two cards do draw about the same amount of wattage. And that brings us to our final round for this comparison, which is performance. Now, uh, I basically tested these two cards out across three different games and one synthetic benchmark, and as I might have mentioned before, the results between these two cards are very similar. They have the exact same specifications, other than the fact that the DirectCU Mini comes factory overclocked, and I had to manually overclock the DirectCU 2 card. I think I had 110% power target, 50% uh, or I'm sorry, 50 megahertz uh, core clock increase, and a 15 megahertz memory clock increase for the DirectCU 2. Those are my overclock settings. Depending on what you use or what you may see, they're probably going to vary, so the results that I'm giving you here will vary. Uh, I believe that, uh, well, I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to let you guys see, watch some gameplay, see some numbers, sit back and relax, and uh, yeah, here you go. Here are your benchmarks. guys, so there are the results, and quickly I did want to mention that the DirectCU 2 uh, did get beat out by the DirectCU Mini in both Crisis 3 and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon by a significant amount, by about 4 frames, but that's also because I kind of held back on the overclock settings for the DirectCU 2. I didn't really do an extreme overclock, I kind of went for more of a moderate configuration just because I feel it's more representative of the out-of-the-box overclock that you commonly see with most factory overclock cards. Usually they don't push the boundaries of that card when they factory overclock it, they just kind of give it a little bit of a boost, which is essentially what I did with the DirectCU 2. Uh, but off the record, I did actually do an extreme overclock for the DirectCU 2, uh, and I was able to beat out uh, the DirectCU Mini in pretty much every test I ran. So just wanted to point that out. But that said, let's wrap it up. So if you're going to go for a smaller form factor build, maybe you're looking for a, a Mini ITX system, I would definitely go with the DirectCU Mini. Even if the DirectCU 2 card can fit inside of your smaller form factor chassis, I still prefer the Mini just because it takes up less space, which means 
more airflow, and essentially just looks pretty badass inside of a little rig. Uh, however, if you're going with a mid tower or full tower chassis, I would essentially go with the direct CU2 every time just because it's it's got a larger cooler, thermals are better, and uh, quite frankly it just looks a bit more substantial in a larger case. Direct CU Mini might look a little strange uh, or out of place inside of a larger form factor build. Uh, but with that said, they're both extremely good cards, and I know, I know guys, 700 series is right around the corner, why are you talking about 600 series, Kyle? I know, but you know, still, the Direct CU Mini is a new card, it just came out, and uh, the 600 series is still a really good, it, it, it still kicks ass, you know what I mean? Like, even when the 700 series comes out, I'm probably not going to upgrade right, right away, because the 670, for my needs, is, is just perfect right now, and I have no complaints whatsoever, uh, and essentially, I'm sure some of you might even be looking into getting a 600 series card, even when the 700 series cards hit the stores, just because you might see a price drop. Not sure about that, but it's always a potential possibility. But on that note, that is going to conclude this video for today, guys. Thank you all for bearing with me. I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce News, and if you enjoyed this content, please send me a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.